Hello. We have three stories today from Entitled Parents. But our first is the longest and just received a well-deserved update. It tells the story of a newlywed couple intent on keeping the peace, but a family of in-laws are just looking for any reason to fight. As always, your support helps fight the Reddit bot menace. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. Story 1. My sister attacked my wife and my mom is holding our financial documents hostage because of it. Hi Reddit. This post is half to vent, but also have to check myself and make sure I am not going crazy. My wife and I are recently married but have been together since December 2019. Ever since then, we have had nothing but problems with my family, particularly my mom and my one sister, as well as occasionally my brother, sister-in-law, and dad. My wife and I have talked multiple times in the past few years about whether we feel like it has gotten to the point of us needing to go no contact, but haven't pulled that trigger quite yet. This past weekend, however, and the aftermath are having us seriously consider it. I guess I just need some advice. The background, lead up. My wife and I were asked to help with a home project, painting, for my brother and sister-in-law's new house. The only supplies that were brought for said project was one single paint sprayer and one single roll of painting tape, even though we had seven to nine people at various points who were there to help. More tape was later purchased. My wife, my mom, my sister-in-law, and I started taping up the parts that needed covered, and my brother started painting behind us. There wasn't a whole lot to tape, so once we finished that, there wasn't anything to do other than sit around and wait. Eventually, my sister starts painting, and my wife and I decide around 7 p.m. that it would probably be smart to try to order food for everyone. My wife is with one group on one side talking about food orders, and I am on the other side with my mom and sister. My wife heard them yelling and was concerned, especially due to previous history, that something was happening. So she came over and asked what was going on. Here is a play-by-play of this conversation. My sister hands me the paint sprayer and says, Your turn. Oh, okay. I thought I was supposed to go get food. Too bad. My mom chimes in. I did ask you to help paint. Well, I did help tape. Well, I didn't ask you to help tape. I asked you to help paint, didn't I? I suppose. So my wife comes in. What are you guys yelling about? Oh, we were just giving him a hard time. My wife says, Oh, okay, it just sounded like yelling. My sister says, He can talk to his family without you. It's none of your forking business. Huh? You have no right to be a forking shrew to my mom. It's none of your business. And he can talk to his family without you around. My wife responds, I was just asking a question about my husband. Is there a problem with that? You don't get to talk to my mom like that, you witch. Again, I was asking a simple question about my husband. Sister takes a couple steps towards wife. Wife walks towards sister. Sister is literally centimeters from wife's face. Wife places her hand on sister's chest and tells her to back off. And then sister started swinging. Basically, my sister started swinging on my wife, and my wife put her hands up to block her face and accidentally hit my sister in the face. After this, I pulled my sister back and my wife stepped back. My sister was yelling things like, She forking hit me! Call the fracking cops! Etc. After my sister eventually seemed to calm down, I let her go, and she lunged at my wife again, and this time got a hit in. I pulled her back again, and then my brother and sister-in-law walk up and start yelling at my wife. Sister-in-law says that my wife is making them look like trash to their new neighbors, and my brother tells us to get the frack off his property. My mom started yelling at my wife, telling her she was being a witch, and that she had no right to come at her, my mom like that, even though my wife hadn't even moved yet from the spot where she was standing. Fast forward, over the past few days, we have gotten many text messages and phone calls. The gist of those is basically continuing to blame my wife and telling me that I am a terrible brother, son, and uncle to sister's kids who were also present for this entire scenario. Additionally, we need some old tax forms for some financial paperwork we need to fill out. While my wife's parents sent those to us as soon as they were able, my parents are holding them hostage and flat out refusing to give them to us. I was told that I would have to drive an hour to their house to retrieve them and have a conversation with my mom and that my wife was not welcome to this conversation. Additionally, that my wife is no longer welcome in their house. When we called and asked if my mom could please just email them to us, we need them, her exact response was, maybe. 
Withholding our financial documents feels like it should be a last straw for me, but it's really hard, and I want to make the right choice. Edit 1. My mom finally gave us the tax returns. She had them because she has always filed for my siblings and I. In regards to everything else, my wife and I will be going no contact. We are currently sitting down making plans and putting the rest of our affairs in order to cut the ties. Edit 2. Wife here. I want to clarify because I see more than a few comments talking about this. My husband intervened the second it got physical. The reason he did not intervene before that point is because of previous conversations where we have attempted to work things out with his mom and sister. In those, they communicated that if they have something to say to me, I am perfectly capable of defending myself against them. I agree with this, and from the very beginning, I had always asked my husband to let me speak up instead of just him. Part of this is because I am just that type of person, but it is also mostly because my husband, due to severe anxiety and constant abuse throughout his whole childhood, shuts down when there is conflict with his family. I am the type of person that stays very level-headed in high-stress situations, and so therefore, am typically more equipped to defend either or both of us in those scenarios. In this case, I can handle any of them yelling at me and have no issue defending myself. I honestly prefer it. The second it got physical, however, he jumped right in. Update 1. We are officially no contact with my mom, sister, brother, and brother's fiancé. We decided to set a timeline for six months, wife's suggestion, at which point we will require them to attend family therapy with us to attempt to repair things. Basically, they will have one chance, and if they refuse to go to therapy or therapy doesn't go well, it will be permanent, no contact. As of right now, things are going fairly well for us. My anxiety is a lot lower knowing that I don't have to worry about them. The main thing that sucks is that I wrote a letter to my nephew explaining that we won't be around for a while, but we still love him a lot and can play Xbox together anytime. It's being withheld from him by my sister, so who knows what they are telling him. Also, my other sister, who I am still in contact with, is getting a lot of abuse from our family that I cut off. Her and I and our partners have always been treated badly and are the black sheep of the family. So now, since they do not have access to me, she is getting extra. She would love to cut them off as well, but it's a lot harder for her as she lives right down the street from our mom. She's hoping to move away someday soon, though. It's really hard, but I know that this is the right decision, and maybe one I should have made before it got this bad. But my wife and I are just hoping to go forward and live our best lives. On the plus side, now that I don't have those jerks interfering, my sister, that I didn't cut off, and I can actually build our relationship. It was hard to do that previously as my mom always got in the way on both ends, but now she can't. Thank you everyone for your comments. It helped me realize that even though it is hard and I have been conditioned my whole life to stick by my family no matter what, they aren't treating me like family and I deserve better and my wife absolutely deserves better. I have been picking up some of her favorite things regularly as part of an apology and I'm hoping that I can continue to work with her and our therapist to be the best husband and to put her first. In the comments, Smelly Cat Litter, quoting, withholding our financial documents feels like it should be a last straw for me, said, seriously? This is your last straw? Are you for real? Amelia Rosewood said, they set you up. It went from zero to a thousand in seconds from absolutely no hostility. They set the whole thing up. Your sister seems an instigator and your mother is most likely manipulating the instigator to rule her up more. They don't need your wife to make them look like trash. They are trash, pure and simple. The whole thing reminds me of trailer drama or Springer. Withholding your mail is a federal crime. Destruction is as well. People like this can't reason with them. Cut them off. I'd like to know how these people muster up seven to nine helpers to paint. I can barely get an extra pair of hands to help me move. <laughs> oh, right. Gaslighting and manipulation. Apparently a very effective tool to get people to play into your wants and desires. An OP really lucked out finding a normal wife who was willing to support the prolonged extraction of these tumors from his life. The next two stories may be shorter, but the entitlement only goes up from here. Our second story involves one young student who receives an odd babysitting request. So odd, it might even be a federal crime. In story two, my cousin's wife tried to put their young son on a plane flight with me. Oh boy, here we go. Let's start from the beginning. It was my very first semester as a college freshman. I officially moved into my college dorm to start this new chapter of my life. I'm an international student, so it was a tough experience once reality settled. 
I thankfully had my cousin, whom I haven't seen in years. His wife, who lived in Dallas, helped me with getting a U.S. member, bedding, and school supplies. Fast forward to Thanksgiving break, I accepted my cousin's offer to go to Dallas for the break since it was better than staying in the dorms. I met his two kids, a son and a daughter. We catch up with each other, seeing how our lives went up to that point. The break ended and went back to college to study for finals. Then it happened. My cousin's wife asked for a favor via text. The favor? Take their eight-year-old son back to the Caribbean with me because his godmother wanted to see him. I told her that I wasn't able to do that because I didn't know when my exams were finished. I actually did know when. I just told her that so she would leave me alone or do something herself. I already made up my mind with my mom's support that I wasn't going to be doing that. Fast forward weeks later, I was chilling in the airport minding my own business when my good cousin called me. He asked if I was doing something for his wife. I told him no and explained myself. He thanked me and I thought that that was the end of it, but no. I saw her with their son holding a suitcase and a carry-on when I was walking to my gate. My cousin was nowhere to be seen. I asked her what she was doing. She gave some sob story of how his godmother wanted to see him and told him that he'll be good as he was hugging my leg. I was shocked. I felt my heart race. The groups were being called and I had to make my decision. Note, I just turned 18 at the time. I barely knew this child. I like to have everything in order and pre-plan to avoid confusion and this would complicate everything. Furthermore, immigration would be on my case. Finally, I don't know who his godmother is or how she looks. I told her no, stating that if she wanted to do this, they could have planned a family trip together and not dump their kid on me. She said that she already bought the ticket and I might as well take him. I told her no again and went on my flight. My family was proud of me for standing my ground as they didn't like her either. Turns out that sometime after or during the pandemic, my cousin and his wife got divorced. Understandable, his now ex-wife went behind his back trying to get his son on an international flight when they could have planned a family trip together. In the comments, Leo Retired said, Flying internationally with a child requires documentation, especially when not immediate family. They probably would not have let him board and possibly detained you, causing you to miss your flight. OP replied, That's what I'm saying. My grandpa works for an airline, so he knows the rules and regulations. For all I know, she probably had some story to say that we're close cousins to avoid using proper documentation and just let us on board. Just an old baby boomer noted, I'm getting this hunch that the kid's father knew nothing about her being at the airport and had not given any permission for his young son to leave the country this way. I'm not surprised your cousin and this entitled idiot are divorced now, OP added. And your hunch is correct. I took a morning flight back home, so it was around 8 or 9 a.m. when he called me about his wife. I had a good hour or half hour before she confronted me alone with their son while at the airport. So my cousin was probably at work when this all happened at the airport. Huh? Asking someone else who just met your kid, family or not, to do this favor. Via text, I'll remind you, is ridiculous. Hard no. Pretty sure that trafficking is one of the last things you want to be questioned on when traveling. Nobody wants that stain on their passport. Jeesh. Our third story was the shortest but packed the most flavor as some newbie parents get salty and start some beef at a family barbecue. In story three, cousin was mad I didn't barbecue food without seasoning for her baby. On the weekend, immediately after July 4th, I hosted a family barbecue. My slightly older cousin, in her mid-30s, had told me that she was not coming a week in advance. Then about two hours before the event, she changes her mind and tells me she will be coming with her husband and her one-and-a-half-year-old baby girl. This wasn't a problem because we bought enough food for there to be lots of leftover. While we were there, my husband and I were slaving away in front of three barbecues in the yard to cook for a group of 24 people plus one baby. We didn't have time to take a break or go inside with everyone else. They were inside because it was raining. During this time, my cousin or her husband constantly came over to complain about our food. They were the only ones who complained food was too salty. Everyone else who came over to speak with us loved and devoured the food. After the Wagyu tomahawks were served, my cousin came over again. This time, her face was red and she was livid. It was red from anger and not drinking. She's a non-drinker. She started complaining that we should have known better that her baby couldn't eat such salty foods and that we should have made separate food for them unseasoned. 
I told her that there was no way we could have done that. We already bought all the food we needed beforehand. Everything was seasoned or dry brined ahead of time. I suggested giving her a big bowl of water so she could try washing off any seasoning before feeding her baby. But she said that wasn't good enough. That's when her husband showed up and suggested that I go to the butcher and buy another tomahawk and come back. That way their daughter could also have some unseasoned. My husband said no. We weren't wasting time, gas, and money on a one and a half year old. Even if we did, she obviously would not have been able to finish an entire steak. I just don't understand what changed. She was never like this before she had her kid. Now she expects the world to revolve around her kid. Is this something that involuntarily happens to a large percentage of new parents? In the comments, Suspicious Gran said, I would have told her it was rude to change an RSVP to yes less than two hours before the event. Ambitious Rub replied, I think this is the bigger problem. You can't expect baby food available if you don't request it, especially with this time window. Old Human Soul added, I don't think you should ever expect someone to cook a separate meal for your child. It's up to the parents to accommodate the child. Ha! <laughs> a steak for a one and a half year old. I can't think of a single child that has ever requested a steak. Hot dogs? Absolutely. OP should have thrown the meat and some water or milk in the blender, whipped up a meat smoothie for this kiddo, and called it a day. Problem solved. And that's it for today. Until next time. Shine bright, Starlight. Yahoo! If you've enjoyed the story and would like to hear more, consider liking, subscribing, and leaving a comment. Thanks, and bye for now.